Hello Internet and welcome to historical headlines for the 19th of December. Hitler fucks up the military once more. Shocking. And this is of course a little bit about how old Adolf took over the position as leader of his own army in 1941, having been disappointed by the efforts of his general staff in the beginning of the Russian invasion and the lead up to the Battle of Moscow. This of course had its consequences as did most of Hitler's military decisions, but to start us off, here is our time-traveling correspondent, Tim Saitson. Thank you, studio. There has, of course, been rumblings for some time that Herr Hitler was going to replace Walter Brauschitz as the head of his Oberkommando des Heeren. Of course, Mr. Hitler himself has, in fact, been head of the Oberkommando das Wehrmacht for almost three years at this point, having been the official commander of all German military forces. But with this decision, he has now now taken direct control of every single military operation the German military is carrying out on the eastern and western and southern fronts. We will assume that Herr Hitler assumes that his tactical genius, as he calls it, and his strategic vision, as he calls it, will be more than enough to make up for the fact that he will now be forced to himself deal with every single problem as it pops up. Critics have said that it might have been better if he would have stood back and been the great strategic mastermind while leaving his generals to deal with the tactical image, but following the Battle of Moscow, which Hitler was obviously not satisfied with the results of and the actions of the German military in the run-up since the invasion started six months ago, he has obviously decided that enough is enough and he is not going to deal with any of his subordinates anymore, he will take care of things himself. What this will mean for the future German war effort that has up until now ran rot shot over any opponent in his path one can only imagine. But it is worth noticing, of course, that one more opponent has turned onto the field, as it was only ten days ago that Herr Hitler declared war on the United States of America following the Japanese surprise attack on their naval base at Pearl Harbor. With such power and immediate operational control concentrated in Hitler's hands, one can assume that our listeners would be very interested in hearing his direct thoughts upon the this particular matter about whether or not he considers this a advantage for Germany or something he just felt like he had to do. And fortunately for you, I have managed to secure an interview with the Führer and Reich Chancellor himself. Mr. Hitler, can you tell us exactly why you have made this decision to take over the Oberkommando des Heeren yourself? Du, meine Arbeit für richtig ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe, dass ich anständig meine Zeit verwendet habe im Dienste meines Volkes. Yes, that is perhaps somewhat interesting, though I would very much doubt that Jewish merchants in Nuremberg would have anything to do with the immediate Russian assaults on the Russian front. Herr Hitler, is your plan now then to turn against the defenders of Moscow once more or divert your forces into the southern and northern fronts? Kleine wurzellose internationale Clique, die die Völker gegeneinander hetzt, die nicht will, dass sie zur Ruhe kommen. Es sind das die Menschen yes a very topical explanation there from the Führer thank you Herr Hitler it is always nice to hear your completely coherent and recently logicked explanations for what is going on in the German Reich Nicht sind irgendwelche Anhänger irgendwelcher Weltanschauungen, sondern dass wir sind Angehörige eines Volkes. And with that well-reasoned explanation, we go back to the studio. There were, of course, more than just immediate unsatisfaction with his generals in the run-up to the Battle of Moscow for Hitler to take personal control of the Oberkommandos das here and thus complete operational day-to-day -day control of the German army. Von Brauschitz was ill and would probably have to be replaced, but of course Hitler could have found some toady to take his position, at least as he did later with some 
someone like Keitel or Jodl. But as much of a military decision to take complete operational control himself, this was as much a political decision, because if he had then complete control of everything, once again, there would be no chance of anyone opposing him, and secondly, he wouldn't have any of these stupid generals trying to gainsay him with their logic and supposed military knowledge whenever he proposed some kind of sweeping military strategy, because they felt like it would be bad. Because if he had day-to-day -day operational control, he could tell them he was the only one with sufficient strategic big picture to in fact make such decisions and thus concentrate even more power in his own hand, which was of course not exactly a new thing for Adolf Hitler to do in his rule of Germany. What this specifically meant was of course that the German army became Hitler's toy rather than Hitler's tool. With no one around except for his yes-men to in any way gainsay him, at least up until someone like Guderian got put into position in 43, Hitler was the man who decided everything the German army did for the next two years without any kind of opposition. And of course, if you notice, this was also the two years when things started to go terribly wrong for Germany. Mainly because Hitler, despite all of his self-confidence, was of course a fairly bad general. This is what happens when you take someone who has been Lance Corporal and give him full operational control of the most powerful military in the world at a given moment. Things don't always tend to go the way he desires. In fact, one might suppose that the Allies thought about sending Hitler a gift basket when they heard about this development, since from now on they had to deal with Hitler's grand strategic design, rather than those of his generals who were actually professionals, skilled, and in some cases brilliant. And this would of course only rise in significance as Hitler, towards the end of the war, degenerated ever further into his own fantasy world, rather than the actual war that was being fought on the factual battlefield. But yes, that was today's historical headline. Hitler shouts, I do what I want! Give me the army and appoints himself day-to-day -day operational general-in-chief of the German military forces on the 19th of December 1941. I shall return tomorrow with another historical headline. Until then, I have been the Sage and I wish you all a very happy day.